The last one uh, is simple, the biconditional. The biconditional, well, if A is true, and if we also say that B is true, well, this statement is true. Right? This statement is true. If A is true and B is false, well, that becomes false, right? That becomes false. Well, why, why is it that that becomes false? The way that I think of biconditionals, the, way, the easiest way for me to explain it, again, without getting too technical, is think of the biconditional as a mirror. If I look into the mirror and the mirror represents what's being projected, then the claim is true, right? So if I project A and A is reflected back, the claim is true. That's the easiest way I know how to explain it. If I look in the mirror and I'm projecting, if I'm projecting A and B is being reflected back, then the, the way that I think of the biconditional is where's that source of B coming? There's some falsity there, right? I'm projecting A, I'm being reflected back B, there's some confusion, so it's false. Similarly, it'd be the same, right? If I'm projecting false, if I'm saying that A is false and B is true, there's not an agreement between sort of both sides of this, 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 this biconditional, this mirror. So that's false as well. Now here's the tricky part. If I say that A is false, and I say that B is false, what do you think this would be? Well, it would actually be true, right? Because I'm projecting F, I'm projecting false, and I'm sort of receiving false, and you'd have to forgive my sort of, my sort of uh, um, oversimplified explanation, but I'm trying to make this extremely accessible and simple. But if I'm projecting false, and I'm receiving false, then there, it matches, right? It coincides in this sort of reflective, um, concept of the biconditional. So that's true. Okay, so this is the uh, fully filled um, basic truth table. Um, we have uh, two variables. We have the conjunct, we have the disjunct, we have the conditional. This is probably too small, I apologize, but it's the biconditional. And we have the table completely filled out. Um, hopefully this has helped. What we're going to do in the next um, discussion of symbolic logic is to see why this even matters. Um, and actually, there's a very, very interesting argument. It's a very, very old argument, um, which talks about the existence of God, the characteristics that God has, and the problem of evil. And the way that the argument is discussed is um, with the use of uh, a truth table. So you can't really understand the argument um, for the problem of evil using the characteristics of God until you understand how to sort of structure um, truth tables. So hopefully this discussion on truth table uh, has helped and what I'll do in the next discussion of um, symbolic logic is I'll actually apply a truth table to a very very well known um, you know ages old millennia old um, discussion on the characteristics, characteristics of God and the existence of evil. And we'll use a truth table to work our way through that uh, discussion. Again, I appreciate you taking your time to listen to my lecture. Um, tune in next time. As I said, we'll just be uh, implementing the truth table in an actual discussion. We'll be using this not just theoretically, but actually in practice. Um, and hopefully you're learning something from this. I appreciate you taking the time again. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Thanks.